Hey everyone, my name is Randy, and we just want to say thanks so much for joining a Game Changer group. The purpose of small groups here at Central is to connect with other followers and to grow in our spiritual development. Our hope is this study will make you a Game Changer for the Kingdom. Let me pray over you before you dig into this week's study. Father, open our hearts and our minds to your truth and make us Game Changers for your Kingdom. Amen. Hey, I'm Dave Clark. I'm the lead pastor at uh, Central Christian Church. Um, it's kind of amazing to think now, but I've, I, I've served Central Christian for 38 years. And it just, God is a mind blower. God is a, a, a game changer. Uh, 38 years ago, we were a small congregation of a couple hundred people, and, but God had bigger plans. He, he, he was determined to have a catalytic effect on our church family. And, and, and if we were open to doing game changer behaviors to exalt Jesus, he would bring every possible person he could influence into our ministry. And, and, and so now we're, we're still one church. It's just that we've become a very large church and we're in four different locations and in two different languages. And, and we thank God for that, but one thing that I've noticed through the decades that's not just a game changer, if you will, for, for a church, but, but for me, uh, for, for you individually, for, for, for a family, uh, is, is worship. I mean, that's, I think, the, the number one prevalent game changer in a relationship with the Lord. And I, I can't tell you the number of crazy stories I've heard from people who were like fighting with each other, husbands and wives going at it on their way to church. In fact, that's where some of you learned how to cuss was in those fights on the way to church. And then of course you get out of the car and it's God bless this person and that person. But have you, have you ever... Um, Come to weekend worship all wigged out, all worried about something going on in your life. And it takes you halfway through the service just to decompress. Well, there, there, there was a guy in the Bible, one of my favorite uh, Bible guys, and that's what was going on in him. I didn't, It probably wasn't even the weekend. He was just so wigged out over a tragedy in his life and for his people, he had to get to the place of worship. And what had happened, the, the king of the nation had died. And so this guy, his name was Isaiah, he was just freaking out. He had to get to God's presence. He had to get to the place of worship because the leader was gone. Who, who was going to protect them? Who was going to provide for them? Who was going to guide them? Who was going to make decisions for them? The most amazing thing happened. I mean, he's going to express his worry to God and pray to God, God, help us. But when he gets to the place of worship, he is staggered by the presence of the true, of the one and only living king, God himself. And he sees God. God gives him this personal revelation of his glory, and it just it staggers him. When, when, when was the last time you were staggered in, in worship? Just took your breath away because you sensed undeniably, uh, irresistibly the, 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 the presence of a good and loving God. Well, for Isaiah, he sees this vision. He, I mean, God is so uh, immense in scope that, that his very robe fills the place of worship. Just the, the bottom of his robe and, and towering over the place of worship are angels flying around him and the, and the angels are doing worship. I mean, it's impossible to be literally, actually be in the presence of God and not worship. And the angels, they worship this way. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is filled with his glory. And... Um, Here's how we know that Isaiah truly worshipped. It was not by a song he sang or by a prayer he prayed. 
First words he blurted out in the presence of God was, oh my gosh, my life is flying apart. I'm disintegrating. I'm a man. Um, I, I've spoken foul language. And I'm in the presence of God. I, I'm from a people who, who speak foul language. He probably looked at Facebook a lot. And, and, and in that moment, an angel uh, flies to the altar. Now, in the book of Revelation, the altar is the place where God receives the prayers of his people. And, and so I don't know if this moment is seen as a, a cry of Isaiah's heart, a, a prayer to God in desperation, but that angel takes a coal, a fiery smoke and coal from the altar of God and flies it to Isaiah and presses it against his foul lips, those lips that had spoken those foul words. And all of a sudden, the, the, the stench of burning flesh <laughs> fills his nostrils. And the angel says, now... Your sins are forgiven. That, that's what happens in true worship. You, you may come with your worries, with your anxieties. Uh, you may just come blah and it's like you're gonna be entertained or, but when you, when you truly are ushered into the presence of God, the first thing out of your heart is, oh my gosh, I don't deserve this. God is so good. And, and he just cleanses you, right, in that moment. In fact, um, my favorite worship song is in Psalm 103. And it, the, the psalmist sings this way. Bless the Lord, O my soul. I'm not here to get blessed. I'm here to bless God. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. And I'm going to tell you something that comes next in, in that song. But first, let me ask you this question. Have you ever wondered what your life would be like if not one of your sins were forgiven? If you had no hope of being cleansed of all guilt and shame, if you had no hope of heaven, if, if your only destiny was the grave and hell and death, here are the benefits of worshiping God the text goes on, who forgives all your sins. That's the number one deal. Who forgives all your sins. You walk into worship and as you are ushered into the presence of God, his first instinct is to cleanse you of all guilt and shame, to forgive every sin, to give you a new start. Second benefit says, he heals all your diseases. Think of the times when Jesus would forgive a person's sin before he gave them the healing that they desired. What they needed was forgiveness. Who forgives all your sins, heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit. The pit of addiction, the pit of depression, the, the pit of anxiety, um, the pit of marital conflict, the pit of conflict with your, the, the pit of hell itself. Who, and, but, but God is not just satisfied to get you out of the pit of darkness. The text goes on to say, as the psalmist sings, but crowns you with his love and compassion. This is the good God. He just keeps crowning our lives with love and compassion. That's what happens when we truly set ourselves free to worship him. And then uh, he satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. And, and the psalmist goes on to say that, that, that God is ever at work making things right for people who are hurting. And he says this kind of crazy the way he interrupts himself, but he says, God revealed his ways to Moses. Now, you know, Moses was a big time leader of God's people. And so not that I'm a big time leader of God's people, but but I want God to reveal his ways to me. It says he reveals his deeds, his wonders, his miracles to, to his people. And I want God to reveal his deeds, his wonders, his miracles to the people of Central Christian. Then it goes on. Here, here we go. This is, this is why our hearts get opened in worship. For the Lord is full of compassion and grace slow to anger, abounding in love. Get this, he does not treat us as our sins deserve 
or repay us according to our iniquities. God doesn't keep track of all of our wrongs and say, okay, I'm going to get that guy. I'm going to get that girl. They're going to they're gonna bear a consequence for what they've done that is, is rebellion against my holiness. No, he doesn't repay us according to our iniquities. In fact, the psalmist goes on as high as the heaven is above the earth. How high is that? It stretches pretty high. As high as the heaven is above the earth, so great is the Lord's love for those who fear, for those who worship him. As far, in fact, as far as east is from west, so far has God removed our transgressions from us. Now, if we were measuring from North Pole to South Pole, we could get an exact measurement. But if you try to measure from east to west, if you keep going east, you're just going to keep going. And west, you're just going to... There is no end to the forgiveness, the grace, the mercy of God. And it's true worship is this. You come in to the place of worship on the weekend with a keen awareness that your sins are forgiven with a keen awareness that God has showed you, shown you incomprehensible mercy, unlimited grace. And that part of the psalm closes out with these words, as a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him, who worship him. And so I, I think the best way to get ready for the presence of God in worship is not how careful we are about the clothes we wear or the clothes we get our kids into, but it's the hearts we've prepared, hearts full of gratitude that sins are forgiven, that Jesus died on the cross to pay our price in our place as our substitute for our sin, and that he offers us now his superabundant life. And of course, when that's your awareness, yeah, you want to be with the body of Christ on the weekend. You don't want to miss a weekend. But, but it just flows into the Monday through Sunday world every day, every time it occurs to you how good God is, how good he's been to you, that your sins are forgiven. You can't stop saying, thank you, I love you, I worship you, I adore you. I'm glad to be a part of a church where worship is the primary game changer for our lives and I pray you have a commitment during this game changer series to be present in your small group every week and to be present in worship on the weekend and celebrate our good God. I love you guys.